Hi there. For some time now, I've been thinking about the concept of using a DI box in reverse as a reamping box. Um, and I've been meaning to try it out, uh, but not got round to it. Um, and I thought in the interest of this video and for my own learning, I thought I'd give it a try. So just to introduce what's gonna happen, um, I've got a uh, recording, which I made with my friend Jack Page uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we DI'd his guitar. We tried a few things um, with uh, processing, with convolutions um, and, and various different uh, things to get the guitar sounding a bit more interesting. But this um, is not one, isn't, isn't, isn't something that we tried and it was something that I think might sound great on this particular guitar. Um, so uh, when my friend Joe uh, just, uh, told me he was willing to lend me his uh, orange uh, Micro Terra amplifier, I thought, oh, the planets are aligning, so I might as well give this a go with that. Um, so here's a, um, a, a quick circuit diagram of the two setups we're gonna do today, or a quick schematic. Um, as you can see in uh, option A, uh, we've got the sound card connected directly to the amplifier um, and then that goes to the speaker and um, is recorded via a microphone, which I'll show you in a, in a short while. Um, option B introduces a DI box into the chain, um, but this DI box is used backwards. So where we would normally plug uh, the guitar into the jack input and it would go through the transformer and to the um, uh, into a balance signal and go to the uh, go to the uh, recording system, go into the preamp. This time we're using it backwards and the line level signal from the sound card goes into the uh, XLR, uh, the output becomes the input and then this goes on into the amplifier via the jack output which is normally the input. So yeah, the whole thing is backwards, it's wired back to front. So let's have a look at the equipment that we're using today. Um, I've got my sound card down here uh, going into a patch bay and plugged in the patch bay out of in output six from a sound card is the uh, unbalanced jack cable. That goes into the orange head, Micro Terra, thanks Joe, uh, into the orange cab. And then I've got this SE Electronics um, uh, condenser microphone, uh, relatively inexpensive. It's set to cardioid. Um, you could use a dynamic mic, um, whatever you have around um, for, for the same purpose. Um, and um, I've already positioned the microphone with some headphones on uh, it to a place that I feel is right. Um, but this is the great, one of the great advantages of doing this um, reamping is that if you're a guitarist, you can play into the DAW with a, a, a DI box um, record that signal and then come back later with your engineering ha head on um, and you can adjust the controls on the amplifier, adjust the microphone position um, and change you know, pedals and all sorts of things like that. And you also have a pair of hands. So during the performance, you can also make tweaks and things uh, if you so desire, change effects and things like that. So let's switch across to Ableton. So in Ableton, I've got my guitar track here, uh, which we myself and Jack recorded a couple of weeks ago. You can have a little listen to that. Pretty unremarkable DI'd guitar sound, well played, of course. Um, I've put some processing onto that channel. So I've got a, a high pass filter um, on this EQ, um, oversampling switched in, right clicking in the, the top bar there to increase the quality is always a good thing. Uh, then we've got a compressor, also oversampled, uh, oversampling is enabled, um, and that's just tidying up uh, um, uh, across the whole uh, dynamic range really it's kind of working constantly with a fairly low ratio medium ratio of four to one and a, a medium attack and release and then there's another comp glue compressor with oversampling enabled again but with a high ratio and a quicker attack which is d dealing with these kind of spikes now this is another big advantage of doing things this way is that it doesn't matter if you don't have a lot of guitar pedals you can use built-in processing within the DAW to uh, pre-process the guitar before it goes to the amplifier. 
So you've heard that. Now what we're going to do is assign this to output number six, which is where that jack cable is plugged in. And um, I'm going to enable the record input here and record that signal and you should hear it as it's recording. Okay. Okay, so this time we're going to introduce the DI box into the equation as the reamping box. Um, and what's normally the input on jack will become the output, and what's normally the output on XLR will become the input. So I'm going to use a female XLR uh, to, to jack. Uh, and that's going to go in there. That is going to take the place of the blue jack coming out of my sound card. Uh, and then the blue jack will go into the input on the DI, which effectively now is the output because everything is reversed. Okay, so that's set up in that way. Um, and let's have a listen. We'll go back here again, I'll enable the recording on the reamp channel. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is reduce the level coming out of the channel by 11 dB. Now I know I've played around and I know that's a good number um, for this. Um, and what this is gonna do, it's, also, it's gonna basically mean that we level match the two pretty much as, as, as well as I can. Um, so we can make a comparison between the, the no reamp and the reamp channels. But it's also um, to help not overload the di box we don't we need to be careful what level we send back into the di box um, and because uh, we don't want to get any distortion happening through that or as little as possible so let's have a listen <laughs> So let's do a quick comparison. What I'm going to do is we're going to first of all have a look at the waveform. I think I'm actually a little bit hotter on this one, so I'm just going to turn that uh, down a touch just by looking at this. Looks like that's a bit more like it. Um, and we're just going to flick between the two. The waveform looks more or less exactly the same between these two. There's hardly any difference. I can't really see any difference. Let's see if we can hear anything different about them. So I'll start with the no reamped version and then I'll switch across and you'll see the solo light move across as I, as I solo uh, the reamped version and back again. <laughs> So yeah, I think we can hear a lot more detail in the reamped version. I'm just going to loop this section because there's some really nice picking that goes on here. That's no reamp. And reamp. Yeah, so I think we can hear that there's quite a lot more detail in the reamp version, um, and that's down to this impedance matching um, that we've got going on back through the DI. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful. Um, don't forget that this is not limited to this particular situation. You can use the same technique to send a synthesizer through some guitar pedals, for example. Don't leave home without a cheap DI, a uh, passive DI box, and a gender bender, a female to female XLR. So when you've got your male XLR coming out of a, 
uh, you know, of a, of a sound card or out of a mixing desk, you can use this technique to, um, to flip the gender um, and use your DI box in reverse. Don't forget, check out my other videos in Brooks Audio uh, channel and also check out the description below. If you're interested in supporting me um, and seeing more videos like this, um, this one was actually voted through on my Patreon. Uh, so big up to all my patrons on there. And if you'd like to join that from three pounds a month, um, yeah, check out the, uh, the links in the field below. I'll see you next time. Peace.